<laughs> in this video we're talking about color correction. Hey guys, what's up? It's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm a licensed esthetician and makeup artist based out of Los Angeles, obsessed with simplifying beauty and giving you all the information that I know. So if you enjoy this video, definitely don't forget to hit that subscribe button because that'll keep you up to date on my latest videos. All right, guys, enough chit chat. Let's get into it. I am so passionate about color correction because when it really became big in consumer land a couple years ago. I was still working retail and I feel like a lot of the palettes that came out were really misleading because they were really bright colors and there were a lot of different colors and it basically seemed like the cosmetic companies were saying, here are all of these bright colors in a palette. You need these in order to create a flawless complexion without a lot of explanation. And although the theories and the heart was there, a lot of miscommunication spread down the line. Even to this day, I still see some of the same color correcting techniques um, being wrongly used or just people still not really understanding the concept. So I'm hoping that me going over these three common mistakes that'll kind of help clear up any issues that you may have. Myth number one, if you need a color corrected, use the color on the opposite side of the color wheel. For example, if you have redness in your skin, use green to neutralize it. Here's why that's wrong. Without getting into too much detail of makeup artistry and color theory and art, there are shades, tints, and tones of a color. In other words, you can use a shade, tint, tone, or version of green or yellow <laughs> to neutralize redness in the skin. You need to match the intensity of the color you're trying to correct with the intensity of the neutralizer color you're using. A lot of the time, the redness in our skin isn't as vivid as the green correctors on the market. That's why these palettes can seem confusing. When I am working as a makeup artist out in the freelance world, I use these little La Maquillage palettes. They are great neutralizer colors because they're shades, tints, and tones of the color wheel, but in a more skin tone range. Now, of course, I carry the primary colors so I can mix and match and custom blend for clients. However, most of these shades cover it for me. Myth number two, you put foundation, you put corrector, and then you put more foundation and or concealer, and then and you get my point. <laughs> First of all, that is way too much product. Of course, if you put on that much product, it could cover anything with that amount of layers. The problem is, is that in a few hours, that makeup is gonna break down and it's not gonna stay on the skin in the way that you put it on originally. Most of the time, when I see people using that much foundation and concealer to layer on top of a corrector, it's usually because they weren't using the correct neutralizer shade in the first place. For example, underneath my eyes, is not this shade of blue. So if you go in and try to use this shade of orange, of course it's gonna neutralize any shade of blue, but then I'm gonna have to spend eons trying to cover that orange using my foundation and concealer. And ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> because underneath your eyes is a shade tint or tone of blue, you have to use a shade tint or tone of orange to neutralize it. You'll know you've got the right corrector shade if the undertone of the shade you're covering is gone after you use a little bit of concealer. And myth number three, blending your corrector with a beauty blender or blending it in general. Like, okay. You should never blend your corrector on any other portion of the skin other than the color you're trying to correct. Going back to our eye example, if I were to take even the correct shade of orange, the correct shade of peach to neutralize my under eye darkness, if I were to take that color anywhere else than where it's darker, it's just gonna look like that color because it's not neutralizing anything on the skin. So when I see people taking color corrector and then blending it, it doesn't make any sense because it's not actually correcting anything else. The trick with color neutralizer is that you really need to put it specifically where you need it. It'll neutralize and then you can apply products on top 
to blend it into the skin. If you guys are interested in more information on color neutralizing, I definitely recommend that you check out this color wheel. This is from Terry Tomlinson. She's a makeup artist who has been in the industry for years, and this color wheel is a genius. <laughs> definitely check out her Instagram and you will be blown away yourself. <laughs> you don't even need my recommendation. This is such a creative way to look at the color wheel and it's definitely changed my artistry game. Alrighty guys, I know it's a broad concept and there's a lot more detail that we can go into so if you enjoyed this video definitely let me know in the comment section below let me know what you want to see more of because that way i can spend time creating content that y'all will love as always more tips and tricks on facebook and instagram hope you're having an awesome week and i'll catch you in the next video bye guys